Greetings folks, Professor Fiore here. And now we're going to talk about what happens to your Class B amplifier when you load it with a real-world reactive load, something like a loudspeaker. Now there is a video in the collection on how to make a simulation model for a loudspeaker. What I've done here is I've scaled that up by a factor of 100 so that we can essentially build this thing in lab and you don't have to worry about high currents and powers and all that kind of stuff. You can still use small signal transistors and so forth. So the components we have, RVC is the voice coil resistance, LVC is the voice coil inductance, um, CMES and LCES deal with the mass of the moving system, the cone, and the um, compliance, the springiness, of the suspension in the air in the enclosure, along with mechanical losses, frictional losses over here. So I've just put a, a current source on here, and if we look at the output voltage, we can see what the impedance looks like. It's just that simple. So we'll do a little AC analysis and see what we come up with. All right, so here's our curve. And by default, this comes up in log mode, a linear dB mode, dB being log, of course. So I'll put this in normal linear and we can see what we get. So since I scaled this up by a factor of 100, you know, this 1K is actually, you know, like think of that as like 10 ohms. So this is what you'd have down here. This would be equivalent to you know, like a nominal 8 ohm loudspeaker scaled up by a factor of 100. So this is like a nominal 800 ohm loudspeaker, which unfortunately you can't buy. But in any case, um, with this kind of curve, we have a, a low frequency free air resonant peak. And in this case, that's just a little below 100 hertz. It's about 98, 99 hertz. And at that point, if you remember your uh, parallel resonant circuit analysis, that's purely resistive right there. And then if we look at this slope and up here, up here is where um, LVC is kicking in. This is inductive. So you, you can have a fairly inductive uh, phase angle out here. This is capacitive. Out here, it's largely resistive. So this is the kind of load this represents. Now we go over to our amplifier. Let me shut this down. So I've placed that load out here. And we've got our little Class B output. This is very similar to the amplifier we used in the uh, Class B power relations video. So all of this stuff, you know, all of these materials you should be able to find in the lab. The only one that's tricky is going to be getting this large inductor, this 800 millihenry inductor. You might have to get some uh, like 100 or 200s and string them together to get this. But nonetheless, you know, it's as we say, doable. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run through here. Um, I wanna see what the signals are gonna look like. I've got an ammeter to measure the current through the transistor and a voltmeter to see the voltage across the transistor. We're gonna run this at a bunch of different frequencies. And one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna look at load line, right? Because I wanna see what's happening with this, with this transistor. How, does, how is this affected? All right, so let's just do a straight analysis, transient analysis on here. Um, we've got, let's see, 99 hertz. Okay, so 10 to 20 would be good. That'll give us a cycle. All right, so there's our signal. And we have, uh, let's see here. That red highlight is the load. So we got our 10 volt peak, right? 10 volt, uh, 20 volts peak to peak. The Blue right above it is the generator, so that's what we expect. This is a follower. All right, there's VCE, and of course the current is really, really small because the impedance magnitude is, you know, k ohmish. So that's very, very small. All right, but what we can do is we can come in here and do an xy plot for our load line. So on the horizontal, that's going to be VCE. All right, and then on the uh, vertical, that would be an I of NPN, all right? Okay, so that's what we're looking at for that. 
let's give this a good name and I'll just call it I don't know load line right LL for load line good enough and there's our load line all right so function x over here is VCE if you want to be really nice about it we'll just call that VCE and over here function y is I see all right so nice straight load line which we would expect because this is in fact as I mentioned pretty close to the resonance and thus it's resistive now let's come in here and change this so if we pop this up to maybe one kilohertz well we're actually going to get some kind of phase angle associated with this now if you've seen the class uh the class a video with the reactive load you might have a clue as to what's going to come up but maybe not exactly what you think what okay so notice zero is out here now so this is just going beyond right the transistor this is in the off state for the for the t1 here but what we've generated is an ellipse right or actually half of an ellipse you know the straight line would be going like this if it was purely resistive but this is just half of that total if we did the same thing for the pnp we'd actually get the other half of this ellipse all right and it opens up all depending on what the size of that um, uh, phase angle is right the greater the phase angle is the more this becomes open so let's go to the very next one we'll put this on the upper end so this is uh, 10 kilohertz now up here at 10 kilohertz uh, it's largely that coil resistance it's largely this LVC that's really going to have a, a major impact and let's see what we get out there and I'm going to reset this we don't need 20 milliseconds worth anymore not at that frequency probably 10.2 would be sufficient bonk <laughs> yeah so this is real I mean there's our signals nothing crazy but the phase angle look at this thing all right so that's what you're getting right in the middle if it was a straight line you'd be getting this well this more like this I guess a little bit steeper um, and then we'd get the the continuation of this flipping down for the PNP half you know if it was purely inductive this would be a semicircle you know it would be a perfect semicircle here the point being right you know why is this important because this part of the curve can be extending beyond the safe operating area of the transistor you know when they say a transistor can withstand let's say an amp and 50 volts that doesn't mean it can withstand both of those things at the same time you can't have one amp and 50 volts you know maybe at one amp it can only withstand you know a couple of volts and, and vice versa for the extremely high voltage so you could imagine a line actually uh, on power transistors they they will have in the data sheet something called a safe operating area which will have multiple little breaks in it and it'll show you exactly where it is but this could go outside that could go outside the safe operating area but what if it was a you know perfectly resistive load it would look fine all right so you have to be a little bit more conservative in the design when you're dealing with some kind of real world load all right some kind of reactive load resistors are ideal I mean they're they're very well behaved there's really no complaint with them you get into something like this things get a little tricky okay hope you enjoyed that one we'll see you next time